Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub with Rob B. And we're not here to give you more to do. We're here to give you some things you should never do. Yeah, there's a list of things that best property investors will never ever do. But don't worry, we're gonna give you that list right now. The first thing the best property investors never do is cut corners on professional advice. Paying for professional advice at times may feel painful because you'll be forking out to solicitors, potentially mortgage brokers, letting agents, and more. But paying experts is not a cost. If you are working with really good experts, they will not only cover the costs of their fees, and they will probably either make you or save you money. Don't do the learning on the job with property. It's an expensive game. And if you get it wrong, it's gonna cost you big time. So work with those experts, at least in the beginning, until you've built your knowledge up and then you can consider whether you want to go on and do it by yourself. But Rob and I have been investing for a long time now and we still work with professional advisors. Pay people who are good at what they do and let them get on with their job and you focus on the things that you need to do. The second thing that the best property investors never do is fall in love with a deal. You see this happen in the most visible way at auction, where people get carried away, they start putting their hand up and bidding way above their limit because someone else is competing for that deal with them. And so they went in with their plan and end up getting emotional, getting competitive, and far overpaying compared with what they wanted to. But this doesn't just happen at auction, it happens all the time. You run the numbers, you work out what you want to pay for that, put that offer in, and by the time the offer gets rejected, you've probably spent a couple of hours working on this and you're starting to get emotionally committed. You're starting to get excited by the idea of owning this property and imagining this future reality where it's yours. So when the offer does get rejected, even though at that point you should walk away because you've worked out what the numbers should be, you start revisiting some of your assumptions and convincing yourself that actually maybe you were a bit harsh there. You could tweak this number up a bit, that one down a bit, and before you know it, you can justify spending a little bit more. And then if that offer doesn't get accepted, a little bit more again. And before you know it, because you've fallen in love with a deal, you end up doing a deal that perhaps you shouldn't have done. Of course, this is very common in new investors, but absolutely everyone has the impulse to do this. And it's something that you have to work to keep under control, even after you've been in the property game for years and years. But what the best property investors do is keep that impulse under control catch themselves. Always go back to the numbers and the fundamentals of the deal to make sure that they're not letting their emotions lead them astray. The third thing the best property investors never do is get stressed out by what they can't control. Sometimes bad things happen in property, bad things happen in life, but do you need to get stressed out about it? No. You should minimise your risks in property. So take out the relevant insurances, work with experts, don't over leverage. But once you've minimised your risks and your downside, when things inevitably do go wrong, you shouldn't get stressed out by it. You know, tenants will leave. Sometimes tenants will damage your property, but by working with a good letting agent and having insurance in place and a deposit in place for that damage, any worrying beyond that point is time poorly spent. I remember working with one property investor and she went through every scenario that could possibly happen to her property, negative scenarios. And we worked through all the risks and we worked through how to minimize those risks but she was still worried and it got to the point where her final example of something that could go wrong was a meteorite hitting her property believe it or not she actually went on to become a property investor but don't spend time worrying on silly things there's lots of other things you can spend your time more usefully on the fourth thing that the best property investors never do is get influenced by friends family and media friends and family have your best interests at heart they want the best for you but they're probably not property experts. If they are, maybe listen to them. But if all they've got to offer is things that they've read or stories that other people who aren't property experts have told them, then it's probably not putting too much weight on their opinion. The media is something you should be even more careful of because unlike your friends and family, they don't necessarily have your best interests at heart. What they want is your attention, and the best way to get your attention is to be wildly over the top. And they're over the top to the upside and the downside. You can almost tell when a property crash is about to come because the media is full of stories about how quickly people's house prices are going up and how much money they're making. You rarely see any warnings in the media at that point about how this probably isn't sustainable and it might not end well. Similarly, when prices are falling and the market is in a bad way, that's normally the best time to actually invest, but you'll never have the media telling you that. 
It's very easy to get emotionally whipped around by things like this and to be deterred from investing when you really should be and to be egged on to investing when you really shouldn't be. What the best investors do is tune it all out. They know that nothing's ever as good or as bad as it's made out to be. They listen politely to their family, then carry on with what they wanted to do anyway, because they know that property works really well over the long term. They know that they've got a plan that works. So all they need to do is tune everything else out and get to work. The fifth and final thing on our list that the best property investors will never do is work without a clear strategy. All the best property investors have defined goals and a clear strategy to hit them, a roadmap to exactly how they're gonna hit those goals. And that helps them be really effective property investors because it will rule investments in and rule investments out. It stops them getting distracted by shiny new investments. And that is what a lot of property investors will do. They will drift off from their strategy because they'll see something that looks interesting and exciting, but that will cost you money and it will set you back from hitting your goals. So be like the best property investors, stay disciplined, have a clear strategy, stick to it and you will hit your goals. So there you go, you've got your list and you're ready to avoid it. But there's one other thing that you need to have on your list. Yep, all the best property investors, subscribe to our channel. So hit that button now and hit the notification bell while you're there.